Now, SQL Server 2000, so we go from 1998 to 2000. This was not originally planned to be a major release, but they decided to go ahead and make it a major release because you had Windows Server 2000, Exchange 2000. What are you going to have, SQL Server 7.5? No, they were doing the Windows back office, right? And they wanted everything to have the same name. So it simply became SQL Server 2000 to go with the back office 2000 suite. Now, it's not too many new features above SQL 7. But what was nice about it is that it worked with Windows Server 2000. And what that gave us is 7.0 was on NT4. Windows Server 2000, now we have more memory that we can work with. We can work with more CPUs. Things are more powerful now. So SQL Server 2000 was a meant to be a minor release, but it stayed around for quite a while. OLAP services became analysis services. That became the new name for it. And reporting services debuted as an add-on in, I want to say, 2002. I'm not... 100% sure if it was 2002 or 2001. It was somewhere right in there, right? But it was a free add-on. Okay. Now, notice we go from 2000, the next slide, to 2005. Man, that's a long release cycle. I can tell you when SQL Server 2000 released, we expected a SQL Server 2002 or a SQL Server 2003. And when I say we, I mean the database professionals working with SQL Server at that time. We certainly didn't expect them to wait five years. But you have to also think of what else was happening in Microsoft at that time. Well, remember that .NET started to take shape around 2000, 2001, and was finally released in 2002. We had Visual Studio coming out, right, 2003, and that debuted all the new tools. So we thought we'd get SQL Server 2002 or 2003, but the .NET team apparently went to the SQL guys and said, no, we want to be able to use SQL Server with .NET. We want to be able to integrate all of these. And so from what I have read on the blogs and read on the Microsoft sites, there was somehow between the two teams, there was the agreement, hey, we won't release SQL Server yet. And then it just got delayed. And became more and more delayed. And then eventually in SQL Server 2005, they came out with these new features, the SQL CLR, right? This was the big feature of SQL Server 2005, the SQL CLR. To what, what that really means, and we'll learn about this later on in the video book, what it really means is you can now use .NET code inside of SQL Server. You can store methods functions in a DLL and you can now refer to them inside of the Transact SQL language. It was a big marketing play and some people really use it. Uh, by and large it's probably for the 2% of the people that work with SQL Server, certainly less than 5%. Uh, the other new features here, database mirroring, schemas came along which is, uh, this just makes life so much easier as a database professional working with schemas. Don't worry, we'll learn about those if you don't know what these terms are. You'll see those later on. Now SQL Server 2008 was not a huge step in terms of new features, but because it's built for Windows Server 2008, you put it on a Windows Server 2008 box, oh man, you could have, I don't know, 64 CPUs each with quad core. You could have four terabytes of memory. I mean, just huge, huge numbers of hardware that we could work with here. There are some new features as well in SQL Server 2008, but primarily it's this, the features are for a small subset of people. Primarily, primary reason that most people will consider upgrading to 2008 from 2005 is they're moving to Windows Server 2008 and they want to take advantage of that extra hardware. That's my opinion. Now some people you say, well I don't even know what geospatial is, how do I know what Oops, sorry. How do I know what I want to do? Let me do that again. Geospatial is talking about the mapping applications, geocoding, that type of thing. Right? If you're writing those types of applications or working with that type of data, then this is an absolute snap-in for you. Backup compression, you know, if you're dealing with 
terabyte size databases, 500 gig and up databases, and storage of your backups it can kind of become an issue at that point. Well, there you go. That's definitely going to help you. Okay. Um, encryption was added in SQL 2005 natively, but it's quite complex. And so SQL 2008, they tried to take that and make it better. And they call it transparent data encryption. So if you needed it in 2005 and you didn't like it, you know, and you still haven't implemented it instead of writing a third party, using a third party or doing it yourself, handwriting your encryption, then you could use this. Right. So but primarily for me, it's the big hardware uh, that I like, the ability to run more and do more with what I'm given here. So how about the next version of SQL Server? Well, I can only offer so much. I can tell you what I've seen on the blogs. I'm recording this in November of 2008. And what I'm reading about the next version of SQL Server is that the BI, the business intelligence sector, is where Microsoft is putting all of their time. This is the area that they see has the most growth. They're looking and saying, you know, 10 years ago, we, could, we thought that a 20 gig database was really, really big. And today, we're looking around thinking that a 20 terabyte database is really, really big. But maybe a 20 petabyte database is just massively huge. Okay, so people need a fast way to slice through two terabytes of data, one terabyte of data. We don't want to have to wait four hours to run a query. So what business intelligence tools can we provide? What reporting solutions can we do? How can we make Excel better? as a, an, an, an analyst's tool. That's the kind of questions I think they're trying to solve today. Storing images is a big thing as well. Satellite imagery, geotagging. Um, as we move to a more digital world, there's got to be a better way to catalog images. And so that continues to be a growth market. It used to be that the rumors around I don't know, 2001, 2000 time frame, were that the next version of Windows will run on SQL Server. Well, it didn't happen. wonder if it'll ever happen. I don't know. I kind of suspect it won't, but it was a rumor, so we still have that hope to cling to.